Hi everybody, welcome to episode two of the Photography Explained podcast. This week, how does a camera actually work? I'm your host Rick and each week I will try to explain one photographic thing to you in plain English in less than 10 minutes without the irrelevant details. My aim is to explain things in just enough detail to help us with our photography and no more. Okay, so how does a camera actually work? Well, a camera is basically a lightproof box with an opening in it that allows light to pass through to something that records the image. That's how a camera works in one line. I think I might need to go into a little bit more detail than that, though. What actually is a camera? Well, the word camera comes from camera obscura. Obscura is a Latin word that means dark in English. Camera is Latin for vault or vaulted room, apparently. I hope this is right. In the 18th century, the term camera obscura came into being, which means dark chamber. So there you go. Next time you look at your camera, if it's not behaving, just call it a so-and-so dark chamber. That's quite a sinister term, isn't it? Dark chamber. But it makes sense. Okay, so a camera is a dark chamber, which in modern terms we call a lightproof box. So the lightproof box has an opening in it, which is protected by a shutter. When the shutter opens, light is allowed to pass into the lightproof box onto the film or sensor. Obviously, the light passes through a lens, which is how it gets to be sharp. I'll explain that in a bit more detail in a minute. Bear with. Okay, so let's look at the fundamental components of the camera, which is important in talking about how a camera actually works. The camera body. This is the bit that contains all the clever stuff. The sensor. I'll come on to that in a minute. All the settings, all the levers, dials, everything, the LCD screen, the inputs, outputs, straps. The camera body is a thing that you hold normally when you're taking a photo. I mentioned in there the sensor or film. Now, when I started in photography, there was no such thing as digital cameras. Yes, I'm that old. We had film cameras. Now, if you know film cameras, the sensor is pretty much now where the film used to be in cameras. In fact, it's remarkably similar. The old film format has dictated so much about cameras and um, the physical dimensions of them. So this is the thing, the sensor or film. I have to refer to film because it helps me put some context to these things. This is the thing that records the image. Now I'm going to do an episode about how a camera sensor works. It'll take me about... Well, how long do you think it's going to take to explain that level I need to know? Yep, seconds. How does the sensor work? No idea, to be honest with you. Okay, moving on. The shutter, the all-important shutter. In its closed position, light cannot get through the shutter. When you press the shutter release button, the shutter opens, exposing the sensor or film. I'm going to stop saying film now, because most of you are going to go, never going to use camera film. Why are you talking about this? We'll stick to sensor. So you press the shutter release button, the sensor is exposed to the light coming through the lens, and that is when the image is recorded. The slower the shutter speed, the longer the shutter is open, and the more light that gets through. I'll come on to this in another episode. Next thing is the lens. Now, the lens is normally attached to the front of the camera body. It might be that the camera body has the lens built in or built on, and you can't change it. But basically, the lens is the thing that lets the light through and focuses it. Now, a lens has a thing called an aperture, because when you look at a camera lens... It has a hole, and that is the hole that the light gets through. But the aperture is adjustable, and that changes the size of the lens opening. Fully open is fully open. If you close the aperture down or step the aperture down, the opening gets smaller and it allows less light in. Now, this has a a relationship with the length of time the shutter is open, but I won't get into that now. Okay, so that's a camera. That's cameras in general, but what about things like a phone? Well, a phone's no different, really. The phone is the camera body, the lens is the lens, the sensor is somewhere within the mass of electronics, and the shutter release is the shutter release. It's the same principle. A camera phone is a lightproof box with a hole in it that lets things in to take a photo. So the principle is the same. Okay, so that's the level of explanation that works for me on how a camera works. Now, you might think that's a bit oversimplistic, but um, that is the fundamental. If you go back in the day to the thing called a pinhole camera, that was a lightproof box with a hole in it, and the light was um, projected onto the back of the thing. How it recorded things, I don't really know. Yes, what else did I want to talk about here? Because I'm (laughs) I'm struggling on this one. Next episode, I am going to talk about, I touched on it briefly, is the relationship of the shutter, the lens, and the aperture. I just want to talk about this a bit more, because this is so important to how a camera works. 
When you're taking a photo, you press the shutter release button, the shutter opens, light is exposed to the sensor. But how do you get the correct exposure? Now, there are three components of the exposure triangle, which I will go to in the next episode in much more detail. But those are the shutter speed, which is the time the shutter is open, the aperture, which is the amount of light that's let in. And there's another thing that I haven't mentioned yet, which is rather bizarrely called ISO, and that is the sensitivity of the sensor to light. Now, the point I wanted to make about all this is that current modern day cameras, if you were starting inventing a camera now, you'd probably end up with the phone. You wouldn't end up with the box with the lens on it and the sensor at the back. DSLRs are an evolution of SLRs. DSLR means digital single lens reflex camera. Now, the point of this is that DSLR is basically the film camera, the SLR, where the film mechanism has been removed and the sensor has been put in the same place. Everything else fundamentally has stayed the same, such as the aspect ratio, focal lengths, apertures. All the terminology that we use for modern day cameras is from from the film days, which is why I keep on going on about film. Now, I haven't taken a photo with a film camera for 15 to 20 years, so I'm no advocate of film cameras and film photography. I don't see the point. I'm happy in the digital world. But, um, yeah, the sensor on a full-frame DSLR is exactly the same size as a negative on a 35mm film. What I'd love to know is if we were starting again now with a camera, or whatever you might want to call it, what would it be, what would it look like, and how would it work? Because you wouldn't be having... 130 of the second f5.6 an iso of 400 i mean iso is another one that's an evolution from the days when you bought camera films with different speeds for different uses nowadays you just turn a dial and you change the sensitivity but would we have that if we were starting from scratch no we wouldn't we'd just have a button with plus or minus for lighter and darker i would imagine which is the way things are going anyway that's enough i'm going to stop there so to sum up A camera is a light-proof box that lets light in to take a photo. And this is the level of explanation that works for me, and I hope that it helps you as well. Okay, next on the Photography Explained podcast, it's not the exposure triangle explained, it's another fundamental one. How to take a photo. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a nice review and rating wherever you get your podcasts from, and please subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Feel free to let me know if you think my podcast episode was good or not. All opinions are welcome. And also, if you could tell anybody who you think might be interested all about my podcast, then I would be very grateful. Finally, check out my website, rickmacavoyphotography.com, where you can find out all about me and my architectural and construction photography work, as well as my blog, where you can learn lots more about photography. I said earn then. Finally, let me know if there's anything you want me to explain, any photography thing. Check out my website, lots of ways to get in touch. Thanks again for listening, and I will see you on the next episode. Cheers from me, Rick.